Hello, what's up? This is the second edition of the Autocar India podcast. And like I promised last week, this week we're going to be talking bikes. And joining me to do just that are Rishad Cooper and Karthik Singhi. Thank you so much for doing this, guys. And Rishad, I have to start with the lead bike story, if you will, in the issue this month. And that is the rebirth or the re-entry, if you like, of the Bullet 500. Tell us a little bit about that bike and what it does. Well, the Bullet 500 felt uh, very, I don't know, really authentic. The feel was, you know, being carbureted and not... Surprisingly, enjoyable. very, very enjoyable motorcycle. I think both of us were a little taken aback, very smooth. Very, had a lot of character the bike, very enjoyable despite being... Character is the middle word, I think, key word. I think, yeah, it, it felt very true to what the bullet is meant to be in that sense. We're about a month away from when the Continental GT breaks cover in the UK. And that's a complete departure from what Royal Enfield have been doing over the last, what, 20 years is, at least, isn't it? Well, uh, I think the bike's already broken cover in several ways. We've seen pics of it on uh, Twitter. Siddharth Lal himself tweeted images of the bike, uh, of him riding it around. So, a fair bit is known about the motorcycle. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be very exciting, uh, you know, roughly. Looks-wise, I think they've they really hit it, you know. Uh, you've got that retro look and yet very classy and... Has the looks changed significantly from what you've seen later, from what we saw at Auto Expo, that Cafe Racer concept we no, saw at Auto Expo? it's more or less the same. Uh, and they've got it right. I think I think it, it looks very good. They've come out with different versions, of course, like the on the pic, uh, pictures that were seen, you know, like they've got a option to get a pillion seat as well. So a flat seat all the way back, so you can also have a pillion as opposed to the most of the Continental GD pictures which you've seen, which is a single seat. I think that in is... In the, India, nobody will buy the <laughs> yeah. bike if the it doesn't have a pillion, pillion seat, seat in the back. Yeah. Talking mechanically, what's changed with the bike? Because, I mean, Royal Enfield, known for cruisers, but this is a whole new area for them to play in, really, the sporty, sportier performance. But can you do that from existing Royal Enfield engines? How have they done it? No, it's basically the same. It's not going to be anything much... Uh, changed but but there has been talk of the flywheel being lightened and a little more quick quicker revving engine and I mean that's so the heart of the matter is still the UCE which has brought Royal Enfield to where it is today but yeah they are tweaking it it's got EFI so they're going to tweak that obviously and like Richard said uh, tweaks to the engine itself mechanically so that it's more in tune with the cafe racer sort of uh, motorcycle rather than the traditional touring that most bullets. I don't even think not. people would want something too modern from from a Royal Enfield. Yeah. You want that, you know that. In fact, that's that's the, something I wanted the to feel ask all you of need you because is. you want that retro feel, don't you? Because who do you think, Rishad, they would be targeting with this bike? Not so much the young street bikers, but perhaps a 30 plus somebody who wants a slightly bit more performance out of his Royal Enfield. Royal Enfield bikes, if you look at them, they've got prob probably the longest life cycle of any motorcycle around today. There's no other bike that's made today which was virtually the same as, you know, what they made in the 50s. So, we've, the Cafe Racer will do just that. And, and the same audience, those guys who, who want that look and that, you know, it's a lifestyle statement more than just pure bike. But biking. I think it, it, it will appeal to a, quite a fair uh, cross-section. Like, you know, you go for the Royal Enfield rides, you find a lot of youngsters uh, on the bike, you know, 20-something. 24, 25, yeah, and as you grow, I mean, uh, some 30-year-olds also, a lot of them come on these rides and, yeah, much older guys also, who you'd expect to see on Royal Enfields, I guess, in that sense. But even with the Cafe Racer, I'm sure you're going to see a lot of young guys and even, like you're saying, the 30, 40-year-old guys who will have that nostalgia thing, but irrespective, I think the bike looks cool enough to attract anybody's attention, whether they've seen the older Cafe Racers or not. You know. And talking of Royal Enfield rides, you've just come off the Himalayan Odyssey for what was it, the third time you've been up there, Karthik? What was the ride like this time? Well, uh, very different actually, even though it was the third time, because the first time I rode down from Leh to Delhi, I've always ridden up from Delhi to Leh. Very different, uh, incredible experience because the riders now on the way back are so much more confident and so much more in tune with their bikes and the environment that it's a it is it's different kind of fun everybody just rides has a blast gets to where they had to go i mean where you're going to for the day your day's stopover and then it's like a big party so yeah it was very different from uh, when you ride up because everybody's just wondering oh man what's going to come the next day 
and uh, everybody's a little tentative about what's going to come their way. So a little bit scared maybe, but not so on the way back down. Okay, before we get any further, just a quick word to everyone watching. Our apologies for the knocking sounds on the audio, but where we're shooting right now, there's a lot of renovation work, renovation work happening. And more than that, also, as you can see, we're shooting in Pune. We've got a little bit of a window of good weather, but if it starts raining, we're going to be out of here and back in, and then we'll continue this in a bit. But on that note, Bikers moving... Bikers scared of rain? What are you saying? Man? Presenters scared of rain. Bikers <laughs> probably not scared of rain. So moving on to another bike that's been perhaps amongst the most talked about bikes in the last couple of months, the KTM 390 Duke. Rishad's the only one amongst us, I think, who's ridden that bike. Tell us a little bit more about what it was like to ride and what... How different is it? How does it take the KTM lineup forward in India? I think it's it's a, it's just a, an outstanding bike, a brilliant. Because you know, at that price point, the performance that you get, I don't think there's nothing really that gives you that level of performance in India for that price point at present. Around the world, maybe there's something that comes close, but still, it's going to be a world-class bike, and it's made in Bajaj at Chakan. I think. The feel of the bike is, it's really quick and light and uh, mm, it's, it's really interesting to see what Bajaj and KTM, you know, together this partnership that they have, how it's, how it's moved at this lightning pace from, you know, in five years KTM's gone from, from way back down in the, on the European theatre to number one, they've overtaken BMW this year in sales and they're going i mean it's not stopping it's it's getting bigger and better so you know what bajaj is doing with ktm you you'll probably see bajaj as an indian manufacturer tomorrow on the world, world uh, standard you know competing with the likes of honda yamaha everybody so it's it's happening and it's and we're just witnessing that in in the present day you know so it's it's very interesting you know a lot of people who rode the uh, duke 200 kept talking about how it is very frantic and very on the go all the time keeping you on the edge is the 390 like that is it a little bit more calm it's much calmer because see the 200 makes much lower power and and if you really want it to 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 go fast they've geared it a little short so you get that you know that they've made it like that it's made so that you get that feel of a frantic uh, you know very into bike but the 390 they've got that much more power to to gear into the bike so so the gearing is much taller and uh, you don't have that same feel but I, it's still fast i have to tell you this like when he came back from the 390 ride the first thing he said to me was book it you, book it because like when we spoke about the 200 like the 200 was a bike that I was about to buy a bike then and I didn't buy the 200 because it was too, like for me at least you need a bike you can relax on as well, you know. When you're riding easy you should feel like you're relaxing, which wasn't there with the 200. You've got to keep it on to really enjoy it. And he said the 390 is not like that because of the taller gearing and that gives it a slightly different character from, uh, quite a different character from what the 200 has, which is good for some, maybe not so good for some. But waiting to get the bike. <laughs> and just talking about the 390, there are a couple of other things I wanted to address. The first is, is there a sports bike coming soon on that uh, platform? Yes, and using there that? is, there is. They, they, they've already announced that there will be a, 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 a sports in. bike, a fared, yeah. up, fared up bike on the same platform. So, and it, it's going to have styling similar to that, the, the bike which is seen. If you can see it on our website already. It's all, all up there. And the new Pulsar? That again, exclusive on our website, we've had it for a while, but tell us a little bit more about what to expect from that. Well, you know, the, the Pulsar, the big, I mean, the brand has become something else, you know, in terms of... Uh, Appeal and, I mean, just the way what people expect from it. I think you can be sure that it's going to be really exciting and, and look at the photos, those early little few photos that have come out. I mean, it really looks smashing, the bike looks terrific, so... And I think what really will make it all the more exciting is if the one, the 390 has been priced at 1.8 lakh rupees. Can you just imagine what the Pulsar is going to be priced at? That'd probably be 1.4, 1.5 lakh rupees maybe. Hopefully. I mean, probably. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to say maybe even lower. God knows, you know, because uh, if you look at, this is a 50,000 rupee increase over the 
Duke 200, 200 Duke. And uh, the Pulsar is at about 95,000 rupees uh, on road. So, yeah, you could look at that ballpark. You could say that Bajaj, I mean, they're not, maybe they're not number one and they're not in that race for one and two. But excitement and, level. But excitement <laughs> level, they're number one easy, I mean, by far. And they know how to do this by now, right? One bike comes out, then the rumours start, then you start expecting, you'll, you'll see the odd picture and then boom, it's there. And more often than not, they meet expectations. That's the thing with Bajaj. Yeah, they meet. Nowadays, that, that's this the trend. the beauty I mean. of developing platforms, right? Now it's happening in the bikes as well. You know roughly what what's coming because of this you know the engine is going to be based off what the 390 has and uh, we know what the chassis is going to be like uh, like the duke it's not going to be too different from what the 200 ns has uh, of course tires brakes will require an upgrade to deal with all that much more power the pity is they haven't come up with a with an enduro bike yet KTM. i mean being ktm yeah. and not having an enduro in india uh, I think they really need to have an enduro bike here because that's what KTM is all about. So they really need to get one. Engine. Just one, and the 390 <laughs> platform is like it's, it's probably perfect superb. for that as well, isn't right? It? So I, I do hope they do it. Even though I mean, we all know the impulse. It didn't do too well in the market, but as a bike, but I know it's someone fantastic. here who owns fan one boy. and loves it. Complete yeah. fanboy. I ride one every day. I love it. So, it, it's, so there's two it's here. You two. <laughs> okay, so we're getting there, but. You know, interesting thing you guys brought up, which was the pricing element to it. And that's where, you know, other manufacturers who want to come and play in this space now need to be very aware of that. And talking of other manufacturers playing this space, Rishad, I believe you have a little bit of a scoop for us about another bike that's in this displacement range coming soon. Yes, we, we believe that the Mojo, Mahindra's Mojo will come with a, a totally revised uh, facelift as to what was you know seen earlier the bike's not launched ever but uh, they've shown it earlier and uh, i'm being told now that the whole the look will be it will be completely restyled much better looking than the old old one you've seen and sticking with mahindra you know we've had the centuro now i saw a press release in the inbox a couple of days ago talking about 10000 bookings for that bike but are they making the step back from fixing the issues that they had with the Stalio and the earlier bikes and coming back to a level of quality that they can work with with customers? Definitely, they're on the learning curve and, and, and it takes time because at least Mahindra is doing it the right way. They've got their own R&D in place and they're now slogging away at it slowly, slowly, slowly. They, they'll get there. I'm sure they will. So it's, it's just a matter of time. The Centuro... Centuro is interesting, na? because they've got this... I think they've got the Mahindra spin to bikes, you know, and that has really been... Packing the features as well. Yeah, Packing like, the features. What, what wowed people with the next UV? It was just the level of equipment, the way it was styled, and they've really gone for that kind of uh, grab your attention kind of uh, features on the Centuro. And to a 100cc, 110cc platform where you've never had this ever before. So it'll be interesting. I mean, And at see. the same time, it also has... A pricing advantage, you know. They've priced it at forty-four thousand rupees introductory, which undercuts its competition. So it's given. It's got all the Mahindra trademarks as well, you know. Like it's got the features, uh, features which you've never seen before in that space, and cracking price. Vishad, another exclusive on the Autocar India website. We had pictures of what is supposed to be the new Charisma. Is it coming yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. I I would think that would be the new Charisma. Because you can see, I mean, if you look at the bike, you can see the family resemblance is just, <laughs> it's there. And a lot of, there was a lot of speculation on the web, on the web with a lot of blogs and people uh, reporting that it could be something new from, you know, the EBR uh, bike. Eric which, the Eric which, Racing yeah, connection. Yeah, the EBR yeah. connection coming to, coming out again. But I don't think that's the case. I think this would, that's still some while away. And I think this would be just uh, Honda, still the hero with Honda and uh, a charisma, perhaps. The, again, there's a lot of speculation it could be a 250. I don't think it will be a 250. I think it would be closer to where the charisma is right now, around 223cc. So I'm going to share some behind the scenes gap. Once we got the pictures, we were looking at them. And we were talking, like, wondering what it is to start off with, at least to narrow the field down. And we were like, you know, there are some things that stand out about the bike. One, it's distinctly a sport bike, but it's got twin shocks at the rear, which 
is uh, a safe side, something that Indian manufacturers typically would uh, go because of the Indian mindset saying it's safer. Then uh, the clip-on handlebars, the mirrors, they all kind of give you kind of hints about who it could be. And that's how we narrowed it down and then of course there was a lot of work done by Risha to home in onto what it was. You know, I'm just going to go back to Auto Expo last, uh, the last Auto Expo and when I was there, one of the stalls that had me excited in jumping around was Triumph. Yeah, I think everybody. You know, they were all set up, they were, they looked good, the bikes looked awesome, they looked like they had a plan and then things just went very cold for the longest time. But now, Rishad, you're saying that you've heard that they back, they launch in India by the end of the year? Yes, what we're hearing now is that, uh, I mean, yes, you're right, you know, it was the most perhaps by, exciting by yeah. stall in Expo. I mean, we were all like really excited and and they announced pricing and they said we're going to be here in the I next six months. I think what floored everyone was not just the range that they were bringing to India, the commitment with the motorcycles, but also the pricing, which was just breathtaking. But I think the delay has been because they're doing it the right way. You know, they're not coming in just to get into the market with a CBU uh, imported bike and, and, you know, with high pricing and, and getting their products in here. What they're doing is they've, they've studied the market properly. They've realized that to compete and to, to really offer the customer the best value, they need to assemble in India. And what we're hearing now is there's a small production unit, uh, assembly unit, sorry, not production, where they will uh, assemble their bikes in Manesar, somewhere outside Delhi, and, and s through just a few hand-picked dealers start getting them out into the market until their big factory is up at Narsapura in uh, outside Bangalore. So, And of course the plus side to the whole thing is that Triumph already has a factory in Thailand. So availability of parts, motorcycles, whatever it is, is going to be... That side of things should be sorted yeah, out. Yeah, because their mainstream ranges are uh, like uh, the 6 and 5 motors made in Thailand. So getting it into India, not an issue. And uh, surely with the assembly happening in India, the prices will still be very, <laughs> very trying, exciting then. <laughs> very exciting still. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be a bit more than what was announced at uh, Auto Expo. Just taking into consideration material costs, uh, just inflation, everything. I mean, it's been two years since then. But and of course, where the rupee is going against the dollar and all of that. Oh, which yeah. we really don't want to talk about yeah, here. Yeah, we really don't want to think about that right now. <laughs> But, no, yeah. but uh, okay, we're just about getting close to wrapping up. But before we do, I want to talk about uh, scooters for a bit because you know last year when I was looking around, there was maybe one scooter launched, a little bit of action. Everything seemed very quiet, and then suddenly this year, especially over the last few months, we've had this slew of scooters coming in, things happening. Tell us a little bit about what's happening in the scooter space, starting perhaps with Honda. Rishad, you, you wanted to talk about the Activa 125? Right, we've got information that, that Honda's coming with this Activa 125, which is a big step forward because, uh, I mean, if you look at the original Activa, it's their first product in India, Honda's first product in India. And I think even Honda is taken aback by how well it's done. It's their first and it's also their number one product by far. And it's been 10 years a little over 10 years and they've not done anything significant to you know improve the i mean they're selling it with a little rebadging and a little it's uh, gone to 110 uh, from 100 HET, but, but yeah. really nothing major and this will be a major change the 125 cc engine or thereabouts in a in an activa uh, body i mean it I should be i think it makes exciting. a lot of sense because uh, it, Today, if you look at commuting, even commuting in the cities, you're doing faster speeds on scooters, which is why people are, I think, asking for a bit more performance so that, you know, sitting at 70 kilometers an hour in a city like Delhi, Bombay, you know, you can do that. So, people want a bit more punch and I think that And I be think knowing Honda, you, you can expect they'll give you that bit more punch and, and the mileage won't suffer. So, yeah. I think win-win. I think out. Active has been a game changer. They won't mess with the basic... Uh, uh, formula of that but yeah 125 is only going to make it more exciting and more appealing and with that we're going to wrap up the second edition of the autocar india podcast send us your feedback tweet us with what you thought it's at autocar india mag or you can tweet me at sandeep srikanth or tweet karthik and rishad 
Just let us know what you thought about the podcast, what you'd like us to talk about, and keep tuning in to the, going over rather, to the Autocar India website for the very latest news and happenings from cars, bikes, SUVs. We've got it all covered. See you next week.